It's Tuesday, September the 21st, uh, a little after 9 a.m. in the morning in room 1010 in City Hall. I'm Councilwoman Jan Perry. Uh, Mr. CLA, tell me if we have any consent items. Good morning, Madam Chair. Rafael Operator with the CLA's office. We'd like to recommend for consent. I'd like to recommend for consent items one through three, as well as six. Items one and two relate to property sales, DWP owned land in Inyo County. Three relates to membership agreement, and six relates to a, a stormwater uh, status report, stormwater program status report from Bureau of Sanitation. All right, that'll be fine. Um, and actually, number six would be a receiving file. Okay, receiving person. file on number six. So that okay. would leave you with four, five, and seven. All right, well, why don't we. Uh Start with number four. Item number four relates to DWP report relative to proposed amendment number one to an agreement with Power Engineers for Professional Services in connection with the Barren Ridge transmission project. And now Dr. Williams has filled out a card on four. He's the only speaker. So why don't I let him come on up here and go first? Come on, Dr. Williams. You can speak. And then we'll have staff come up. It. Number four, right? Yep. Number four. DWP, here we go again. Transmission and renewable resources, real problem. But over in Northeast LA, we already have renewable resources being installed uh, without any community input to them. Uh, solar panels, not much, but anyway. However, renewable resources have to have transmission in order to get them here. One of the central issues is coal replacement will require geothermal for baseload production. And there's no transmission. The element here is just uh, a simple addition of only 50% increase over the previous contract. A 50% increase. Doesn't DWP have any cope, means of coping with these cost overruns of 50 percent? In many other places, you wouldn't be allowed to have that. So transmission is a problem. It's always ha has been. I've worked on the Tehachapi transmission system. Big problems. But they were well known by the clients. However, in this case, DWP gives a 50% increase in to the contract. Is this indicative of what's going to happen in the future when we have to get, do maybe, oh, maybe a few thousand megawatts of generation someplace else and bring it to here? We have a basic problem. We don't want to do things in basin or in the service area while we're willing to destroy parts of Owens Valley and the entire eastern side of the state of California. So why have this increase now? I don't think it's justified, and I think they need to do more in basin. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Williams. Now if we could have staff come up. Say your names for the record. Good morning. My name is Chuck Holloway. I manage the environmental assessment group for the Los Angeles Department of Water Power. Okay. And then you are? Um, Robert Roth with the CAO's office. Great. Um, if you could, uh, gentlemen from the DWP, if you can discuss the need for an amendment to the existing agreement with power engineers and tell us what additional services they'll be providing uh, the department as it relates to the Barren Ridge Renewable Transmission Project. Yes, this is to prepare an environmental impact report slash environmental impact statement. We are co-leads with both the United States Forest Service and the United States Bureau of Land Management doing NEPA, and we're the CEQA lead, the California Environmental Quality Act lead. Um, the decision was made to hire an independent third-party <coughs> environmental consulting firm, and unfortunately, or fortunately, we're, we're on the heels of two Southern California Edison transmission projects that are going through almost or very close, same same generation resource area and trying to get into the load centers of Southern California. And 
as a result of some of the stuff that had come up with those Edison projects, the Forest Service and the Bureau of Land Management has required that we do more in our scope of work than we had originally proposed. And that's in fire management, looking at cultural resources, biological resources, and those kinds of activities. What's the cost of the additional amendment, and how is that cost going to be covered? The cost, the amendment is for $1.9 million. And I understand that some of the budget for some of the stuff that had been put off or that was going to happen in later years, we've kind of reallocated that. Yeah, I'll ask the CAO about that. Tell us just a little synopsis of the Barren Ridge transmission project and how it's going to improve or benefit your operations, and which renewable facilities are connected to Barren Ridge. Well, right now, Barren Ridge was constructed to connect the Pine Tree Wind Farm up in the Tehachapi's. That area is rich with a lot of renewable energy resources, such as wind, solar, and some geothermal further up in the valley. And these are the resources that would connect to that transmission line. Now, currently, there is a 230 kVAC alternating current transmission line that originates just north of Bishop, bringing some of the hydropower down to Los Angeles along the aqueduct. And there was a little bit of some capacity left on that transmission line that was able to carry the energy from Pine Tree. But any future projects would require an upgrade in that line and this initial new double-circuit kV line. So will there be sufficient capacity in this new transmission line so that we avoid the capacity issues faced by Owens, Rinaldi? This line, the way I understand it, our transmission planning folks look out, you know, 10, 15, 20 years or so, and the thought is that this would meet our needs, you know, into that time frame. Now, has the Department faced any sort of public opposition to this Barren Ridge project? And has anything manifested yet? No, we're actually scheduled to release the draft EIR late this year, I believe early in December, and it will go out for a public review period December and January. We've had a number of public scoping meetings. We've had some informational workshops, and we've met with a number of the Chamber of Commerce's in the communities that we're looking at maybe going through. We have three alternatives, one that goes through Acton along the 14, one down through San Francisco, and one that goes over to the 5 by Fraser Park and down through Castaic. Everybody, I mean, people are concerned when it's going to go through their backyard. I think everyone sees the need for it and understands why we're moving forward, but they would like to see it somewhere besides their backyard. But aside from that kind of opposition, we've been working to mitigate that, looking at where we can multi-circuit towers, avoid maybe people's homes by going around them, maybe through the Forest Service land. And so for this kind of project, I think that we have real minimal opposition. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll wait and see. Mr. Krikorian has just joined us. Okay. Mr. CAO, what's your position on this? Well, essentially this is a situation where the federal government has increased the requirements for the department, and to continue with this project and to perform the environmental reports, it's necessary to approve this resolution and the additional funding. The amounts are included in their capital expenditure budget that's already approved by the department. We recommend approval. Okay. All right. Unless Mr. Krikorian has questions, we don't have a quorum, so, you know, we'll do this as a recommendation. All right. To approve. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is five, and I have a card on five, right? Okay. Yeah. Number five relates to the Board of Public Works report and environmental impact report relative to the Wilmington Drain multi-use and Machado Lake ecosystem rehab project. Staff and Board of Public Works. All right. Dr. Williams, why don't you come on up on number five? Okay. You're up. 
Dr. Clyde Williams, 4115 Barrett Road, El Sereno, Northeast LA. Uh, the Mikado uh, Lake. One of the problems here is that it's at the bottom of the barrel. And it's a detention pond. What are they going to do? They're going to aerate it with oxygen. Interesting. However, uh, being with the Audubon Society, many years ago, many decades ago, the FHA forbid any ornamental ponds. Why? Because it wasn't the dogs, it wasn't the cats, it was the birds. And special design requirements were made so that you avoid encouraging any birds, wading or swimming birds, to use the pond, or you don't have the pond. Uh, Makata Lake is going to be a cesspool, almost, because you're going to have to aerate it. Oh, aeration. That's standard operating procedure in sewage treatment plant. Aeration. You aerate it. You keep it moving. You circulate it in order to keep the BOD from accumulating and especially the nitrates from the birds and such like that have a problem. So what do they do? They put in aeration. But we know that operations and maintenance is a problem for the Bureau of Sanitation and especially for the stormwater system because right now they don't have enough money to operate and maintain and the Mikado Lake will be a very big source of operations and maintenance costs because of that aeration. So what will they do? They'll turn it off. Standard operating procedure. If you don't have the money to pay DWP, you turn off the power. And therefore, until somebody complains, and then you turn it back on. Thank you. Operations and maintenance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Staff? This is a PROPO project yes. to uh, enhance or improve flood control capacity for the uh, Wilmington drain. And it also helps us meet our TMDL requirements. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. So why don't you give us your names for the record? My name is Alfred Mata. I'm the project manager with the Bureau of Engineering. Maria Martin with the Bureau of Engineering. Dorothy Meyer, consultant to the Bureau of Engineering. Okay, great. Who wants to kick it off? Okay, I will. As you stated, uh, Councilwoman, um, this is a propositional project. It's a $500 million bond program to fund projects that are construct uh, improvements to the city's uh, waterways to improve water quality. Uh, to date, we've got 33 projects, about 33 projects that have been funded. Two of the projects that have been funded are the Wilmington Drain and Tidal Lake Ecosystem Rehabilitation Projects. As these projects are right next to each other, they're viewed as one bigger project. Um, a number of pollutants have been identified at both the Wilmington Drain and Machado Lake. And this project, one of the goals is to improve the water quality there as well as to maintain and improve the ecosystem, as you stated, to maintain and improve flood capacity and recreation um, at those facilities. The EIR uh, describes three project components, the Wilmington Drain Multi-Use Project. Uh, that project itself has three, or, or that component has three subcomponents of habitat and park designs, channel improvements and bank stabilization, and best management practices for stormwater improvement. Um, also, the Machado Lake Ecosystem Rehabilitation Project is a second component that's considered in the proposed project, and that has five subcomponents, similar to Wilmington Drain Habitat and Park Design, Best Management Practices, Lake Improvements, Wetland Improvements, and Recreational Improvements. The third component that, uh, identified in the EIR is a Supplemental Water Supply Pipeline, which is a project that will be managed by the Department of Water and Power to bring recycled water to the lake to provide makeup water for the evaporative, evaporation losses of the lake water and help maintain a healthy lake, lake maintain the lake pool. Um, so that's, that in a nutshell is what's going to be taking place in the project. And the findings of the EIR uh, did find that there were significant, imp the, the draft EIR found there were significant impacts related to a number of, of issues, air quality, biological resources, cultural resources, hazardous materials, noise. Was that related to construction? 
Yes. Most of the... So those would be resolved once construction is complete? Most of the impacts are temporary construction-related impacts. And what are the cultural resources that were impacted? Well, we've taken mitigation measures to mitigate so that the cultural resources are not going to be impacted. Do you know what they are? We're going to be... We have a cultural resource expert that's going to be on hand in terms of doing surveys and monitoring the construction to make sure we're not disturbing any cultural resources, archaeologists, things of that nature. I don't know if you want to add anything to that. No. The resources are not known. There is the potential for cultural resources at the southern end within the native soils. A lot of the area has already been disturbed. But as Alfred indicated, we do have mitigation for excavation that will occur within undisturbed soils. But we do not know the nature. There's just the potential for cultural resources, including Native American resources. Okay. Do you want to add anything? No. All right. We've also been joined by Mr. Alarcon. So the recommendation, there's no CAO here. No CAO on this? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. My notes indicate approval of the recommendation for public works. Unless my colleagues have questions or view to the contrary, now we have three. So I would recommend approval. Okay. Just one quick question. I note that there was an initial public scoping meeting just about a year ago, and there have been eight public workshops since then. How dramatically has the project's scope or nature changed since that initial meeting a year ago? From the initial meeting a year ago, the project scope has not changed dramatically. I would not categorize it as dramatic. We've just improved, refined the design, and moved forward with the public receiving input. The public has been very involved. All told, we've had about a dozen meetings. They've been very supportive of this project in large. The community has been looking forward to having some improvement done at that facility for a number of years. So they've been very involved in the previous planning prior to even PROPO existing. We've been able to incorporate a lot of their ideas from those previous planning efforts. Very good. Thank you. So, Mr. Hyde, we're going to recommend approval. Recommend approval? Yeah. Madam Chair, would you like to go through the other items? Yes, I'd like to identify the others. Okay. That was item number one and two, property sales DWP in Inyo County approved. Number three, membership agreement with California Transmission Planning Group approved. Four, approved as well, relative to amendment number one to the power engineers. And five was approved as a committee. And number six, receive and file. All right. We, you know what, we did have a, so those one through five were approved without objection. We did have a card on number six from Dr. Williams. Okay. So why don't we just have you come back up, Dr. Williams, on six, and then we'll go ahead and approve, receive, and file. There's no objection. Dr. Williams, you filled out a card on number six. Do you want to come up? Sure. Okay. Dr. Clyde Williams, El Sereno, Northeast L.A. Periodic review, continuing review of the stormwater program. One thing that they do not include in this is a simple graph. Here's the capital cost now. Here's what it will be in the year 2015, the 2020. And here are the operations and maintenance costs that's going to be incurred. Oh, two years ago, public works through the stormwater program wanted to increase the stormwater fee on the county tax roll. Why? Because they need operations and maintenance. Well, that was two years ago. And then the city council rejected it. Why? Well, poor outreach was one of the excuses, but the central issue was do we know where it's going? Because all they wanted was a total of $50 a year per parcel. That's only $50 million. But they only have right now $25. What happened to the other $25 million for the last two years that they didn't get? What happened? 
didn't didn't they need it? Apparently not, or at least they got by without it. So right now, uh, Bureau of Sanitation Stormwater Program is going without proper operations and maintenance based upon their own submittals. So I'm confused. We have a big program. It's a just the beginning. Propo is just the beginning. It's only five hundred million dollars. They only need eh, roughly fifty million dollars to operate it each year. So what's going to happen in ten years from now? We'll have five hundred dollars per parcel. Thank you. Dr. Thank you. Williams. All right. So if there are no questions from my colleagues on item number six, I we'll recommend uh, receive and file on that or note and file. All right, and then we go on to number seven. I have no speaker cards on that. Number uh, seven. The staff is here on number seven. Yes. CO report relative to the issuance of Los Angeles Wastewater System Revenue Bonds, Series 2010. So we are, uh, this is a refinance. Yes, it's a refinance and also to issue new money. Are we now, uh, we're using 300 million of the 450 million bond issuance to refinance outstanding uh, commercial paper notes. So are we going to have some savings, or reduction in interest? Uh, is, is that the purpose of the refinance? Uh, the per this issuance to, to refinance 300 million commercial paper notes. Also, we have outstanding bonds that we, um, depending on the savings, um, we m might refinance those as well. You know, I forgot to ask you to say your name on the record. Oh, I'm sorry. CEO um, Hato. Um, how are wastewater bond revenue bonds used? And just just a quick synopsis: What types of projects and programs do they support? Um, Lisa Maru could speak on um, our capital projects for wastewater. Okay. And while she's coming up, uh, let the record reflect that Mr. Cardness has joined us. Good morning, Lisa Maori, Bureau of Sanitation. The wastewater revenue bonds are used for a variety of projects. Um, right now we're doing a lot of work on our sewer system, a lot of renewal of our existing infrastructure. And they're also used at our wastewater treatment plants, water reclamation plants. Okay. Um, so again, just for clar clarification, uh, the way that uh, we are approaching this refinance, are we going to enjoy a savings uh, as a result of this refinance? Um, for the commercial paper, uh, we're refinancing or retiring $300 million of commercial paper notes so that um, later on we have capacity to issue commercial paper notes in the future for a future project. So we're saving how much at this time? Um, we don't have those numbers right now. Really? It's not really a savings issue. It's that we're moving the commercial paper program is short-term financing. Right, so you're getting better terms. Right. So now we're extending that into the long-term 30-year uh, notes. Better terms now right. so that you'll be in a better position to, uh, I guess, have a, an even more significant uh, refinance down the road, basically reducing your debt load right now? Well, we're transitioning it from short-term to long-term debt. Um, and that will allow us to, as we have future projects come up, we'll have capacity to uh, do the short-term financing for them. Uh, there no, Mr. Carcass. So basically, this debt was issued prior, but on a short-term basis. Yes. So basically, people bought our paper for like three, four years? No, uh, it's between one day to 270 days is short-term. Okay, so that's short, short-term. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so uh, what, are, what are the, the likely terms of, of these particular bonds once we sell them again? Oh, you mean the interest rates? No, just the, the term. Oh, it will be for, like uh, up to 30 years. So it's up to, so some of them might go for 10, some might go for 15, some might go for 20, and some yes. 30. But it's not like all of them are going to be sold at 30. We don't know what the market's going to ask, uh, want to yes, take on, right? And also, when it comes to uh, the underwriters, uh, who's going to be the senior lead on the $300 million and who's going to be the senior lead on, on the $150 million? For the underwriters, uh, on August 20th, Council approved Seabrook, Branford, and Shank, Della Rosa, and Company, and Stone and Young Youngberg for the taxable portion of the bonds. And um, 
Cabrera Capital Markets and Baxter McCarley Ferry and Company for the tax exempt portion of the bonds. Okay. So B of A is not involved in this one? No, they are not. Okay. That's the first. Um, <coughs> All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, all right, so uh, there are no cards, no other members wish to speak. So uh, if there's no objection, we'll recommend approval on this item. Thank you. I think we Madam Chair, would you like to uh, adjourn the regular meeting and convene the special? Right, let's uh, consider the regular meeting adjourned. And we are now in the uh, special meeting. Special supplement. Mr. Alarcon, Mr. Cardness, Mr. Krikorian, and myself as Perry, item number eight. We have a number of cards on this. I think what I'll do for the sake of time is I'm going to have the uh, folks come up first and speak. I will call you uh, four at a time. Uh, minute apiece. Minute apiece. Uh, and if you don't mind, since we have so many cards and we do have to go downstairs at 10 o'clock, I'll give you one minute each. Uh, Kelly Gilfoy. Larry Acker, Dr. Williams, Mike Massey. Come on up. Ke Kelly Gilfoy, Larry Acker, Dr. Williams, and Mike Massey. Okay, who's Kelly? I'm Kelly. Okay, Kelly. <coughs> You're first. Okay, well, it's uh Obviously, millions of gallons of fresh water are going down the drain, waiting for hot water. That's a problem. <laughs> I am for the motion to produce, uh, you know, an ordinance that would solve that problem. But I would encourage the city not to limit the ordinance to recirculation technology only. Right. That just creates an uphill battle for anybody trying to use an alternate technology. Um, I would like to encourage the city to incur to you. Uh, I'm sorry. Also include uh, heat tracing. Heat tracing can do an average condo, 65, 70 feet of pipe, maintaining only the heat that's lost, not reheating the water, and uh, do it on a, you know, the same amount of energy that a 45 or 50 watt light bulb would require. With timers, it can even be turned off and on at that. So I think it is a viable uh, option, especially with photovoltaics. Some buildings are actually going grid neutral, which would make the use of the equipment free. Thank you. Uh, Larry Acker. Yes. <coughs> Larry Acker here. Acker. First of all, the technology for hot water distribution should be proven by the U.S. Department of Energy in places like that. There are technologies that are accepted and proven by the U.S. Department of Energy, proved by the California Energy Commission, and by a number of other agencies. It's called demand controlled systems, both energy and water. And if you utilize just 8,000 uh, 8, gallons a year, we actually lose a lot more than that, but just 8,000 gallons a year at 420,000 homes, which is basically your, your uh, jurisdiction, that would save 3,567,000,000 gallons of water. It would save 3,246 kilowatt hours if they're all electric water eaters. Uh, that's for water uh, delivery utilities. The water utilities would be 768 million, would be 1 million 540 mil, uh, 100, uh, 1 million four, uh, 554,000 uh, kilowatt hours. Would be Thank safe. you. Thank you very much. Are you in support or opposed or neutral on the motion? Oh, I'm in support of it. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Dr. Williams. Dr. A. Clyde Williams, 4115 Bear Road, El Sereno, Northeast LA. Uh, it's about time. The only problem is enforcing it and getting the penetration into the total number of units that are already installed. Is it going to be retroactive? No. So one of the elements, by the way, we did this technology eh, almost 30 years ago, circulating pumps. So heat tracing will work. Recirculation will work. How about ins insulation? If you just had a retrofit of insulating the hot water pipes for the existing residents, that would be an interesting element. So it's a nice thing to do. There's a lot of other technologies that need to go along with it. Heat tracing, circulation, insulation, uh, demand requirements, getting the heater closer to the unit rather than 10 yards away. So all of these will work. 
Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. Mike Massey. Good morning, Madam Chair, Council Members. I represent the unionized plumbing and piping industry in all of Southern California, and we strongly support this motion. Uh, we encourage you to continue to work with your Department of Water and Power and uh, Building and Safety Department as reference to have them come back with a plan. Uh, this is a good public policy motion here. It's going to create jobs, save water, and save energy. And once again, we strongly support this. Thank you for your time. Great. Uh, Victor Grassington. Is Victor Grassington here? Yes. Um, I can't read this. It looks like Dalk Drury from, and I can't read the last name. Okay. And then Ron Bradford. Okay, Victor Grassington. Yes, I'm Victor Grassington. I'm with Delta Q, Inc. for the manufacturer's representative for Grunfoss Paco Pumps. And I'm here to support the measure on the basis that it represents a significant savings in both water and power, uh, approximately 12,000 gallons a year per average family. And the amount of electricity required to run a recirculating pump would be around the same as a 25-watt light bulb. It represents the savings in energy. It takes energy to transport the water from the reservoirs to the household. And that water, with, in the absence of a recirculating system, that water will just be put down the drain and wasted while somebody's waiting for hot water out at their shower. With a recirculating system, they have instant hot water. It's recirculated back to the water heater. Therefore, it's saved, and there's no water waste whatsoever. So we support this measure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Drury? Yes, Dale Drury, Grunfoss Pumps Corporation. I'm here to support the measure as well. Um, the uh, estimate for savings anywhere from 8,000 to 12,000 gallons per year of water uh, is represented because of the distance water has to travel from the heater to get to the fixture. Uh, by saving that water, you not only save the water, but you also save the energy, what I might call equivalent energy that's related to the treatment and processing of that fluid and getting it to the facility or to the home. Um, that represents uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about $120 per home per year that the supplier would actually save. Uh, in addition to the community as a benefit, literally millions of gallons being saved. And the only reason the water is being wasted is because you want hot water to fix it, which is reasonable. Um, so we would recommend that the pumps be controlled by a timer and an aquastat or a timer and aquastatic <coughs> device in order to restrict it from just running 24-7. Thank you. So either or, a unit wouldn't need both, right? Uh, it could be either you or. You could have both or it either or. could have or. both or either okay. or. Thank you. Uh, Bram Siegel? Yes, uh, we're uh, consultants to the Department of Energy, the Public Interest Energy Research and the California Energy Commission. Um, if, in fact, the motors were less than a quarter horsepower, uh, when it stated 25 watts of energy, a quarter horsepower motor would normally take about 250 watts. If, the, if it was smaller than that, I don't know. How, how what's the size of the motor? Our typical circulator is a 32nd or a 25th of a horsepower. Some of them might be as high as a twelfth of a horsepower for residential applications. Oh, so you consume, how much power is it consuming? Less than 25 watts. Okay, so then that would adjust things. That means instead of, as you can be consuming about uh, $80 a year of energy if that ran 24 hours a day, so it may be very economical. I think I also recommend you use a multi-ceramic insulation in those pipes because now you're adding a circulation loop and now you have, uh, you could reduce the amount of time this pump runs and if you would put a multi-ceramic coating on those pipes, which is uh, 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 recognized by the Oak Ridge National Laboratory, um, it costs about $5 per 10 feet of pipe. It would give you R19. And that's what I recommend. Thank you. So you support it? I support it with condition that you should also put an insulation coating on the pipe, on both pipes, because you have a circulation pipe that's going to lose more heat, so you have twice as much pipe. You want to insulate that pipe, too. That will reduce the amount of time the motor runs. Mr. Bradford. Yes, I'm Ron Bradford. I'm with Signature Sales, representing Lang uh, Pumps. I totally agree with the uh, program of acceptance of this particular ordinance. Uh, again, the city of Los Angeles have done so many 
a thing to conserve on water. We've gone from 1.6 gallon plus toilets to 1.28. We've gone to restrictions in shower uh, heads. Uh, and there's all kind of ways that you're trying to conserve on water. And this is one of the major ways by doing this. Uh, if you look at the average home, uh, they waste roughly between 30 and 35 gallons of water a day just trying to wait for hot water to come from the heater. Uh, again, you have two type applications. You have one for new construction and you have one for those that are doing home improvements where there are systems that can accommodate both of those applications. And uh, again, you're looking at the savings of you got 473,000 homes in the city of Los Angeles. That comes about 14 million gallons of water a day that you're being wasted. So I just think that not only in dollar savings because you pay for water coming into the house, you pay for water going out of the house by way of sewer. So it's a two-way savings on this and also a tremendous amount of water conservation. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, that concludes uh, our public speaking portion. Uh, just uh, to note for my colleagues and for the public listening, uh, this uh, is a uh, going to be continued 30 days to allow the Department of Water and Power and the Department of Building and Safety to prepare a report to the committee on the feasibility of implementing the hot water circulation technology in new construction and existing homes. And you should know that this motion was originated by Mr. Cardenas. Thank you. And uh, so we need to uh, give him that recognition. Um, and I, I, I'm assuming that the report will include uh, information on the department's water conserv conservation efforts and uh, the consideration of implementation of programs or local codes that require hot water recirculation in new and existing homes and uh, talk about uh, obviously uh, whether or not this technology has been employed in other regions and hopefully even in Los Angeles County. I'll give you a copy of my notes too, so you don't have to write this all down. Uh, and then uh, hopefully the department will be interested in investigating the viability of hot water recirculation technology and the feasibility of encouraging a program or balancing that uh, versus uh, mandating a program. And most important, I think, given our constant reference to rates and rate payers, whether the department would offer uh, the customers rebates for installing this technology to encourage its use. And uh, I, I do hope and request that the report includes some discussion about existing rebate programs that are offered and whether or not they're effective and successful. So Mr. Cardenas may want to comment since this is his yes. motion. I want to thank uh, all of you who came forward and, and uh, gave us your opinion and your understanding about uh, the technology of recirculation and its merits and also when it comes to heat tracing and also the options of insulation. And in addition to that, I would like the department to report back on those, uh, at, at least those other two um, energy saving methods uh, so that we can understand whether or not recirculation is optimum or not or good enough compared to the other uh, opportunities that are out there. But certainly we wouldn't want to uh, stall the process. Um, somebody mentioned the federal government, the state government, what have you. I would hope to think that the city of Los Angeles could be a little quicker than those other governments. They tend to be a little slow. Uh, in addition to that, I would hope and think that being that the Department of Building and Safety uh, belongs to the people of Los Angeles, so does the Department of Water and Power. We're not talking about having to coordinate with a third party uh, when it comes to our water and power uh, provider. It is actually the same uh, family of, of ownership. So uh, with that, I think the 30 days should be sufficient, I would hope, uh, Madam Chairwoman. And I think that, that this is long overdue um, and that we need to move this as quickly as possible. Thank you to all the public speakers for your interest. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I think this is a terrific motion, long overdue. These are great systems. I used to have one in my uh, former house, and it was uh, it was great as from the consumer standpoint. From the water conservation standpoint, it's a no-brainer. Um, the one thing I would like to also see in the DWP's report is a data analysis of the energy potential energy increase or decrease that derives from these systems. Uh, because I think we can all assume anecdotally 
that there would be energy savings given the fact that 25 percent of the energy consumed in California right now is used to move or treat water. Uh, so if we save water, there should be some commensurate energy savings. I just would like to see charted out whether that energy savings is more or less than the energy cost of the recirculating system or other technologies uh, uh, th themselves. Um, one of the public speakers mentioned not having this motion be unduly restrictive to a single technology. Um, I agree with that sentiment. Right now, the motion is not restrictive in that way. In fact, it specifically uh, provides for uh, other conservation units that produce equivalent or greater efficiency. So I, I think the report should be inclusive of the range of technologies that um, achieve the same result and the same, uh, <coughs> same savings. All right, uh, no. All right, so we will uh, have this report back in 30 days and uh, appreciate the high level of interest. And I'm particularly looking forward to the possibility of a re rebate to really uh, create an incentive for people to adopt this technology. Um, and with that, we will go. That's the, the end of our agenda. Uh, and the, we are now in the public comment period. Uh, anyone wishing to comment on items that are not on the formal agenda are welcome to do so at this time. Dr. Williams. Okay, Dr. Williams is slicing his throat, which I think means no, he doesn't want to talk. In, so, in thank, a metaphoric sense. In a metaphoric sense, yes. <laughs> so thank you, and uh, the meeting is adjourned. Well, I